both balls back to New Zealand, who obviously have regained possession. They have to keep the ball in hand. Here they go then. James Hook kicks it away behind Sitiveni Sivivatu. Sivivatu pumps it downfield. Dwayne Peel is there, as is Lee Byrne. Good clearance by Byrne, Carter on the other end. You see what happened there? They lost the kicking duel to the extent to which when there was a man left, it was too deep into their 22 to have any possibility of counter-attacking. The two kicks before that, well, even if it had gone out, it's the wrong option at this stage of the game. It's fine, Dave. There is a metre. Brad Thorne at the front for New Zealand. We've seen more of this from New Zealand in the second half. Not so much of that, the penalty, that's more like their first half performance. But the New Zealanders have come at Wales through the forwards. They've played their, a kicking game of their own and they've been much more direct. Well, John Ricano being shown there, but it was Kevin Milamu who went in. Right, a chance for Wales to mount some sort of attack here. The penalty by James Hook. This is almost Wales' first attacking set-piece of the second half. It's certainly the most advanced position they've been with the put-in. But then again, I know, I know the, 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 the Kiwis have dominated, but Wales have really helped them. In between blocking. It's fine, it's fine that it's outside, you've got to let them jump, you're not even trying to jump. Blocking against New Zealand at the line-outs. Ryan Jones has to make a decision here. You kick this, you kick the points. Take the points. Not really, huh? The yeah. difference there, obviously, is the number conceded in the own half, because those are kickable penalties at goal. Or at the very least, they're going to put you deep into your corner and defending. He has to say he has to again, but... Has to put this over. James Hook, his first attempt. This to go up to one nine and nine. Hook hooks it. I think it might be some news of an injury. Yes, Brian, you saw uh, that Ian uh, Evans was in some discomfort, wasn't he, in the build-up to that try by Mar Nonu. He's damaged knee ligaments, so he's bound to be out of the uh, fixture here against Australia next weekend, and doubly bad news for the Ospreys too. Sonia, do you know how it happened? Oh, we can see it now, so uh, we don't need that, but... Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Totally accidental, but bent against the joint. Ian Evans, that will take time. Lieburn, meanwhile. No, no, an, no. An Osprey's teammate. Steady, Brian, steady. It's bounced into no man's land. Richard Kahui tackled by Martin Williams. Wales storm through. Have they managed to turn it over? Rare turnover ball for Wales. Surely Dwayne Peel to. Oh, Wales have been penalised. There's so much going on at the breakdown I situation. Had a to roll away. Straight down. Well, the crowd aren't happy, but even even if even if, and I'm saying if because I don't know because I didn't see what happened. Even if uh, that shouldn't have gone against them, the fact is that shouldn't have been kicked. No, he's off his feet. You can't play the ball there. Can't play the ball. But that ball should have been kept in hand. There were enough players outside. It wasn't a case of. He was the last man, there was no one around him. There were options, move the ball on. It would be interesting to see whether, I don't know, I don't know if we count these, but whether Wales have managed to put together four or five phases this half, I doubt it. I'm sure they haven't, they haven't had any ball. You simply cannot give New Zealand that much territory and that much possession and expect to win. It's just not possible. 
He thumped one against the post, but he's been typically Dan Carter for the rest of his kicks. This, though, is, uh, well, it's... This is a long old kick. 53 metres, and Carter... Well, it might have travelled 52, but it was wide. But it doesn't matter for New Zealand's purposes, does it? Because they've got the ball down to the Welsh 22 again, and they've run another minute off the clock, so... You know, kick to nothing, really. Colin again? Yeah, the, the, the New Zealanders have changed their tactics slightly now. At the moment, they're playing with a back four, They've sometimes a back five. So the Welsh kicking options are somewhat limited, and hence Byrne is, try, is trying to kick to recover rather than kick for space. Lee Byrne there, taken out in the air by Dan okay, Carter. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Byrne goes down. It was, it was, it was, it was, what, what is important to me here is whether or not just be careful. The player was launched against him, or whether or not he was on the floor when he took him out. If he was on the floor, very cynical, very dangerous, but if he's taken up... I'm not sure... No, there's nothing in that, nothing in that at all. Yes. I think the referee just said, be careful. Well, I think that's fair enough, he did contact him, but, you know, it wasn't a purposeful uh, taking away it's of his like, legs, no, but no, it was an effect, an and I think that that's... The ball. You can't just get amongst and stop them. I think that's properly dealt with by Jonathan Kaplan. Jonathan? Yeah, I think Brian's right, you know, they haven't had possession. They've, if, they're, if they're dropping back and there's five players back in now, there's only one thing they can do, is keep the ball in hand and go through the phases and build some pressure. Oh, that's not straight. Luke Chartres won it, but uh, Wales... It, it's not happening for them in the second half. What I've never understood with the new... well, relatively new line-out tactics is when things go wrong, sides tend to call even more complicated manoeuvres, which have more components and therefore more things that can go wrong and generally do. They must be very disappointed about the Welsh performance this half. They should be, and they will be. Carter. Every time New Zealand have kicked, they've found space. Oh, Lee Byrne under pressure. And Wales are back where they don't want to be, and they have to be very careful here not to give away a penalty. They've certainly lost possession. Ali Williams almost hands it back, but Piri Wipu clever pick up, and he's a little terrier. Piri Wipu. Seven. Penalty advantage against Wales. Carter. Great offload from Carter out of the tackle to Mialamu. Ma Nonu switches the direction of play. Richard Kahui tries to stab one through. They know they've got the penalty. Number seven. And here it is. It's Martin Into Williams who's been penalised. Well, I don't know if we can see that again. Uh, I think we can. Seven entry. Given against Martin Williams saying he didn't come in from behind the back foot. Well, well, McCaw went straight down, down on him. What's McCaw complaining? What's he want there? Well, he wants a penalty and he's got one. Yeah. They were both off the feet. To be fair to Jonathan Kaplan, Martin Williams was the first one that went off his feet. Simple as that. But again, that's not really the point. Is The point is that the All Blacks had the ability, the sense, to kick the ball a long way, put them under pressure, because that's all they needed to. The reason they could do that was because Wales have not got the ball in their hand, they're giving possession away, and New Zealand...